Hi there. Now this is my English made Irvine 40 engine. Now this is the Mark II that was made between 1980 to well into the 1990s. And these are fantastic engines and were made in their thousands. It's well made, well designed, it's really powerful, it transitions well, it's just a good all round engine. And being a 40 it's a great size for a lot of planes. But one of the things about this engine is it has a pretty serious Achilles heel. The bearing that they put in this when they designed and manufactured it was a really strange size. It was a weird combination between Imperial and metric. The inside diameter of the rear bearing was 15mm to accommodate a good chunky crankshaft which is great. But for some bizarre reason the outside diameter was an inch and an eighth, so imperial. And that equates to 28.575 millimeters. Now this decision was probably made on the basis of economics and availability, and at the time was a great decision. In hindsight, it was a terrible decision if you want to keep these engines running. Now these bearings, rear bearings, of that imperial metric size are not available anywhere in the world that I can find. There is a company in the US, Bocker Bearings, which provide a bearing that's almost right and if you shim it to get the uh, crank pin in the right place for the conrod because it's, it's not quite wide enough, you can use it. But it's quite an expensive bearing, you've got the cost of the shim and if you live somewhere in the UK or Europe where you've got to have postage it works out a really expensive option. In fact, it's probably cheaper to buy another second-hand engine that's hopefully got a good bearing in it. So what I've done is I've come up with a hack, a fix, where we can fit a purely metric bearing, 15mm inside, 28mm outside, so it's just slightly too small. And what I'm doing is I'm packing it in with gasket paper. Now, I've got some film which I'll show you in a second and I filmed that, this, this film you're going to see, about three years ago and I didn't post it at the time because I would probably, most probably and quite rightly be criticised because it wasn't tried and tested, I didn't know whether it would come work, uh, come, come loose uh, 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 or cause a problem. But now I've been running it quite a lot and you'll see some footage of this engine running in a flying wing later on and it's been a really good solution to keep this engine running and powering my aeroplanes. So have a look at this and see what you think this bit of footage and then we'll have a look at the engine running and then we'll take it apart and we'll see the condition of the bearing and how it's held in the engine. Okay, I'm using Scotch Magic Tape, so we need to just rip a bit off. Cut off the serrated piece, which we don't want. And then, oops, a little bit there we don't want. And then cut a very thin strip. Get rid of that. Now, this thin strip, just put onto the case. Now, I've cut myself a strip of the gasket paper. Now this roughly goes around the whole bearing, um, but we need to check that for size. That's just a little bit too long. Um, the last thing we want is any overlap. In fact, it would be better if it was slightly shorter I think than um, than too long so okay that is just make sure it's as tight as possible um, around that and then we can pinch that edge closed with our nail and then we just get a little bit of um, this scotch magic tape 
and put that on there. Now you can see I've just put it on that outside edge or inside edge. It's actually going to be the outside edge, but because we're going to take the tape off. Now we need to <laughs> make sure we've got the, the, the crankcase housing the right way around. This is the front, that's the back. So we just put that on the table and we gently ease the bearing in. Now when we ease the bearing in, we don't push the bearing, we push the paper as much as possible and we can do that with our nails. Obviously you've got to push the bearing as well. Um, if the bearing, like now, it's gone in a little bit too much without the paper, so I'm just easing the bearing out a little bit because we want to try and keep the paper in at the same level as the uh, as the bearing and the square we can do this the better. Um, I did the first time I just put it on the table and pushed down and uh, it just bent, the bearing went in and the paper didn't and it just all bent up. Uh, it didn't look very nice although the bearing was quite secure and you could have cut the paper off but it wasn't held by quite as much. So you're just easing this in going round. It's not a hugely tight fit Now, you can get to a point where if you want, you can put this front housing on and, uh, and tighten it down. See, that front housing almost fits now. Um, so if we just keep pressing this, Now, if we are going to put the front housing on, it would be worth just going around and just making sure this is um, pushed in, you know, just or, or, or at least the gasket paper's not flaring out. If anything, it's it's coming over the bearing. And then the front housing. Obviously, I know I haven't got a gasket on this, but there, look, we've got that in place now. And if we'd put a gasket in there, we could put the screws in. And then just to push that to make sure it's fully home in the very front um, of this housing here to get the spacing right. And once we've done that, we can then... Actually, I didn't take the tape off, did I? Oh well, it's gone in fine without... It's gone in fine without taking the tape off. The first time I did this, I, uh, and subsequent times I've, I've taken the tape off but it's in there, it's jammed in. We can now push this home. I don't want to fully do it now because it's quite tight on the bearing. As I said in the video, probably best if you take the um, magic tape off that's holding the gasket paper around the bearing. But you know, it's held there between the two crankcases, the front housing and the rear crankcase. So it's not actually going to start floating around in the engine. But anyway, now you've seen how it's done, have a look at the engine running in my Voodoo 6 flying wing. Now unfortunately I've just crashed that flying wing and I drove it really hard down into the ground and completely buried the engine. Did a little bit of damage to the engine but it packed it full of dirt and mud and so I need to completely strip it before I can do anything with the engine or the, uh, the bits from it. But it does give me an opportunity to have a look at the bearing and how it's still holding up and whether it's still holding firm after, what, two, three years with some really good uh, running during that time. So I'm going to strip this down now and we'll see what we find. Now we can see that bearing, we can see that bearing is really fixed tight in there where I held it. And you can just, if I move this in, you can perhaps just see the gasket that goes around the edge. And in fact, 
you can see the magic tape here that I used to hold it as a ring when I, uh, when I put that in and that's held quite well. There we go, look there's the gasket or the gasket paper. Well I'm going to take this apart now and clean it up but that shows that that's held quite firm in there. Well I hope you can see what a good solution that is to getting these engines back and running. I know there are purists who may not like the idea of packing a bearing like that into an engine but at the end of the day without a good bearing we have nothing but scrap metal or a paperweight something to put on the shelf so isn't it better that we can keep these engines running and powering our aeroplanes in the future so i hope that helped and thanks very much for watching